The Rise of Sabermetrics Before analytics took over, the traditional stats were batting average, home runs, and RBIs. Those were the holy trinity of baseball stats. But then this guy named Bill James started poking holes in that logic. He believed that the numbers people were worshipping didn't actually tell the full story. So he created something called sabermetrics, which sounds like something a wizard would say, but really just means using real numbers to understand what wins games. James focused on what actually helped teams score runs and prevent them, like on-base percentage and slugging percentage. And it didn't take long before smart teams started listening. One of the first to take this seriously was the Oakland Athletics, and that led to the whole Moneyball era, where nerds and undervalued players started to quietly crush the league. Moneyball and the revolution nobody saw coming. When the A's couldn't afford superstars, they had to get creative, and that's where general manager Billy Bean came in. He ditched old-school scouting wisdom and leaned into analytics. Here, he found value in players who walked a lot or had weird swings but always got on base. Then, the A's started winning with a bunch of misfits and bench warmers, and the rest of the league had no clue what was going on. But Moneyball didn't just change the A's, it forced other teams to pay attention. Big franchises like the Red Sox and Yankees started hiring people who could code instead of people who just looked good in a suit. And suddenly, every front office needed a stats department. Well, those departments kept growing, and here we are today. So you see, what started as a small idea in Oakland ended up reshaping how teams were built across the league. The death of batting average and the birth of new stats. At one point, if you weren't hitting 300, people thought you were slumping. But then analytics came along and said, hold on, maybe getting on base is more important than just hitting. So batting average slowly started fading away, while stats like OBP and OPS became more important. OPS, which combines on-base percentage and slugging percentage, became the new cool kid on the block. Then came WAR, which stands for Wins Above Replacement. It sounds like something from a military base, but it's really just a number that tells you how valuable a player is compared to an average replacement. The higher the WAR, the more a player helps the team win. It's a simple idea, but it took the baseball world years to accept it. People didn't warm up to war immediately, especially the old school guys who still wore their gloves in their back pockets. But eventually, the numbers proved too strong to ignore. Now broadcasters casually throw around war on live TV like it's been there since Babe Ruth. Shifts, matchups, and the death of the line drive. Another way analytics changed the MLB was with the infield shift. The data showed that certain hitters always hit to the same part of the field, so teams said, fine, let's just move everybody over there. Suddenly, what used to be a clean single into right field turned into an easy ground out to a third baseman standing in shallow right. Some fans hated it, while some players hated it even more. But the numbers didn't care. Shifts were so effective that even left-handed sluggers like Joey Gallo had to watch their batting averages crash into the floor. Teams started positioning fielders with scientific precision, sometimes based on data from years back, and it got so out of hand that MLB had to step in and ban the extreme shifts. That's how powerful analytics became. They literally broke the game to the point where the league had to rewrite the rules, pitching in the age of spin rate and velocity. Pitchers also got their own data revolution. Because it used to be all about throwing strikes and changing speeds, now it's about spin rate, arm angles, and release points. Pitchers use cameras and radar to break down every pitch. They even use slow motion video to see how the ball spins off their fingers. The fastball used to be just about speed. Now, if it doesn't spin like a helicopter blade, it might not be good enough. Analytics taught teams that a fastball thrown high in the strike zone with a high spin rate is actually harder to hit than one down low. That's why you keep seeing pitchers throw up in the zone like they're aiming for someone's chin. And let's not forget pitch tunneling. This is when a pitcher throws different pitches from the same release point so the batter can't tell the difference until it's too late. A fastball and a slider might start in the exact same place, but one drops and one rises. It's like magic, except the magician is holding a radar gun. 
bullpen takeover, and the end of the workhorse starter. Analytics also looked at how pitchers performed the third time through the lineup. The numbers said most of them stink by then, so teams stopped letting starters go deep into games. Managers now yank starters in the fifth or sixth inning, even if they're pitching well. That would have been blasphemy 20 years ago, but now it's a common strategy. Teams also stopped worrying about having one big closer. Now they care more about matchups. You might see five different pitchers in one inning, each brought in to face one specific hitter. It makes the game slower sometimes, but it gives teams the best chance to win, and honestly, that's all they care about. This bullpen revolution also created something new called the opener. Instead of starting a traditional pitcher, some teams now begin the game with a reliever to face the top of the lineup. Then they bring in a long reliever after that. It sounds weird, but it actually works. And no, analytics doesn't care how weird it sounds as long as it works. Scouting development and the spreadsheet era. Analytics didn't just change what happens on the field, it also changed how teams scout and develop players. Old school scouts used to travel around, scribble notes in a notepad, and say things like, this kid's got the tools. Now teams combine that with data from wearable tech, advanced cameras, and even motion capture suits. Scouts still matter, but their naked eyes now have to work alongside numbers. Teams want to know how fast a player's bat moves, how much torque they create in their swing, and how many degrees their launch angle is. It's no longer just about how hard a guy throws, but how efficiently he moves his body. Even the minor leagues got smarter. Prospects now train with virtual reality goggles and data trackers, while coaches use tablets to tweak a pitcher's mechanics on the spot. Players can now see their performance in 3D, analyze heat maps, and fix things before they even step into a real game. It's like a baseball video game turned real. Front offices look like tech companies now. Take a walk through a modern MLB front office and it no longer looks like a clubhouse. Now it looks like a tech hub where you'll see guys in glasses tapping away at keyboards and building machine learning models to predict whether a high school kid from Arizona can become the next big thing. The funny part is, some of these analysts never played a game of baseball in their lives, but they can tell you exactly how much value a player adds over 162 games. They don't need a glove, they need a laptop and good Wi-Fi. And after that, they sit side by side with coaches and GMs, making decisions that shape entire rosters. The front office used to be a bunch of former players sitting around telling stories about the good old days. Now, it's a data war room with big screens and predictive models. And like it or not, it works. Fan experience and broadcast analytics. It's worth mentioning that analytics didn't just stop with teams. It followed fans home, too. Now, when you watch a game, you're not just watching someone swing a bat. You're getting a real-time data explosion on your screen. Exit velocity, launch angle, spin rate, barrel percentage, expected batting average, chase rate, and hard hit percentage all pop up like it's a science fair with cleats. Every home run comes with a breakdown of how it left the bat at 110 miles per hour at a 27 degree angle and traveled 432 feet into the bleachers, like it had a GPS. Some fans absolutely love it. They feel like they're watching baseball through an x-ray machine. Now they can argue with their friends using facts instead of vibes. However, other fans miss the days when a home run was just a home run and not a physics equation. They roll their eyes at terms like expected slugging and just want to cheer without needing a calculator. But let's be real. There's no going back now. This is what modern baseball looks like. Kids growing up today will think it's totally normal to see heat maps during an at-bat or to hear broadcasters talk about launch angle instead of batting average. Even video games follow the same style now as the numbers are baked into the experience. On the flip side, all this data gives fans new ways to appreciate the game. It helps explain why something amazing happened or why something failed. In a weird way, the numbers bring fans closer to the action, even if they sometimes feel a little overwhelming. How will analytics affect the MLB in the near future? Looking ahead, analytics will only go deeper into the bones of baseball. We're talking more numbers, more tracking, and probably more sensors stuck to players' bodies. 
Teams will get even better at figuring out what works and what doesn't. And players who can't keep up with the data might start falling behind faster than ever. On the bright side, the game will keep getting smarter. Injuries might drop because teams will understand body mechanics better. And young players could develop faster because their weaknesses will be spotted in real time. Even fans who love details will be swimming in all the info they could ever dream of. But let's not pretend it's all sunshine and launch angles. Some of the old school fun might keep fading away. If the math says bunting is pointless, guess what? Bunting disappears. If the models say one guy should pitch to exactly two hitters and then sit down, that's exactly what will happen, even if the crowd's begging for him to stay in. Games might get even slower or more overmanaged, and that could drive some fans away. There's also the risk of baseball turning into a spreadsheet contest where instincts and heart get pushed to the side. But let's be real. You don't want every decision to feel like it came from a robot in a hoodie. So, as analytics keeps evolving, the challenge will be keeping the soul of the game intact. The trick is finding balance. Use the numbers, sure, but don't forget the human side. Because baseball's charm has always been in its mix of chaos and control. And if the future forgets that, the game might win more often, but lose a little bit of what made it special in the first place. So, as you can see, analytics didn't just change baseball, it flipped the entire thing upside down. From how players train to how teams build their rosters, from what fans see on screen to how broadcasters call the game, everything now runs through data. And speaking of data, subscribing to our channel will mean one more follower and one more reason to keep bringing you the best baseball action on the planet. See you in the next video.